What's going on everybody? I appreciate you clicking on my latest episode. So I'm in the shop today and it is very cold. It's like 30 degrees out. I have my trusty heater going on the background. So if you hear a hissing, I apologize ahead of time. That's just what I have to deal with uh, working in the winter in the garage. So as usual, I'm working on something different every day. And today what we're working on is this KO3 to KO4 swap. This snout doesn't fit on the KO4. The reason for this is this is a bigger turbo than this. The snout was originally mounted to this housing, and what I need to do is machine this out a little larger to fit onto this turbo. The way I'm gonna do that is with this uh, brake cylinder hone, I'm gonna be wrapping 80 grit sandpaper around it, and the idea is to rotate it on the inside so it'll actually open up evenly and uniform, so when I slide it onto this, it'll be a perfect fit. Uh, that was the only way I could figure out how to do this without having any kind of problems with finding a company that can do it for me. We just don't have any machine shops in the area, and machine shops that I did find wanted an arm and a leg just to make that hole a little bit bigger. So uh, I'm going to set you guys up on my rig so you can watch what I'll be doing to this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get this snap cleaned up at least a little bit. I do have a safety clean tank or a parts wash tank, whatever you want to call it, but... I can't get to it easily because of some various other projects, but I can get this cleaned up at least with uh, some other stuff I have. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just drench this in some degreaser and try and get it clean. side of it too. This was so oily I didn't know it had a rubber o-ring inside of it. I want to see what the actual diameter of this is. It looks like we're dealing with about 30, 34 and a half millimeters. And the new turbo the new turbo is about 38 millimeters now I grabbed 80 grit sandpaper that actually has a sticky back to it so maybe what I can do just stick it in there and then stick the hone behind it. I don't know if that'll work. Okay, well, I had a lot of problems running the sandpaper through here, but it seems like the hone is biting in pretty good. Okay, I switched over to a 60 grit sandpaper. I found some in my toolbox. Hopefully I can get it to stay on without falling apart. Okay, so I didn't want to do it this way, but this is how you port and polish an intake manifold, so why not use this on here? I'm gonna use the Dremel to make it big enough, and I'm gonna use the hone to make it uniform. That's my idea now because this is just not working out the way I thought. Okay, I went and got some more aggressive bits. Okay, so I didn't end up going to my safety clean tank. I just didn't do it on camera because I have too many projects in the way. I clean this thing up the best I can. It's not dirty, it's just the way the aluminum looks. Everything has been ground out. What I want to do is seal it onto the turbocharger. And I want to get the coolant line ready that was on the back. Okay, so I got some of these washers from AutoZone. 
for the coolant line. Putting the turbo in and installing the coolant lines are going to be a different video, but what I want to get done today is installing this elbow onto the turbo. Now because I ground out the inside, I want to put silicone on it. Because if you lose any air at this point, the mass airflow sensor won't read the extra air coming in and the car is going to run lean. I'm going to put a lot in here because I want to make sure this seals. snout permanently installed the next thing I want to do is at least put the rear coolant line on so I was able to match up they were a little thicker but the inner diameter is the same and I was able to match up crush washers on this coolant line. I'm installing this one first because it's the difficult one to get to. It's actually behind the turbo when it's inside the vehicle. So this is the finished product. This intake snout took about an hour's worth of work to get machined out to where it'll fit onto the snout on the KO4 turbo. Is it worth all that work? I mean, if you're on a tight budget and you don't want to go out and buy something that potentially can change the intake, that might be really expensive. This was, you know, maybe $25 in materials to do it myself. It fits now, and at least in the future, what I can do is if a KO4 needs to be swapped in again, that stuff will bolt right onto a KO4 and fit the car now permanently. Uh, the other thing I did was I put this coolant line on because this is literally in the back of the turbo and in back of the engine. You only have this much space to get to it. It's almost impossible to break this loose while it's in the car, so that's why I did it now. And then the other thing is, is making this snout fit, you retain now the original intake system. The original intake system would look like this in the car minus this uh, air filter that somebody installed previously. The other idea I had is you can actually go out and get an elbow that would fit and then adapt this elbow maybe to this part of the intake. Or you can adapt the elbow to an aluminum pipe, which I was explaining the other day. Uh, you have a couple options, but at least with this way I know it'll fit factory and that's the reason I did that. Plus. This isn't my car. All the money I'm spending on this car is actually my friend's money because this is his build. He just doesn't have the technical know-how uh, to do the work. That's why I'm trying to help him, and I didn't want to make this cost more and more money on him. So, I appreciate everybody who uh, is keeping in touch and joining me on this journey. I'm learning as I go along with this KO4 swap. I just enjoy tinkering. You know, like I said before, I'm not a Jetta guy. I'm a guy working on a Jetta, and I'm learning as I go along, and I'm bringing you guys with me. So I really appreciate the feedback. If I did anything wrong or I'm doing things right, let me know. Please comment below. I really appreciate the feedback, and I appreciate everybody who's keeping in touch. Thank you again. And what's really cool is, you know, even if I screw up, uh, you know, I might get some kind of Jetta guru who knows way more than I do, and then I get to make a friend and learn new things about the cars that I couldn't find online. Uh, so thank you again, everybody. I really appreciate it, and have a very nice day.